I'm not joking, I've just turned around and there's a vehicle that's stuck right now. Australia is a big country with a lot of roads, and with a lot of roads comes a lot of obstacles to crash into. But out of all the different obstacles to crash into, there's one that stands out from all the rest and is infamous worldwide for giving budget direct rental trucks the Boosie Fade. And that obstacle is the Montague Street Bridge. The Montague Street Bridge is 119 years old. But you see, it hasn't been decapitating rental trucks that whole time. The Montague Street Bridge, just like me, is famous for being 3 metres tall. But while being 3 metres tall is good as a human, being 3 metres tall as a bridge is not as fun. For the first 16 years of its life, the Montague Street Bridge was about 3.5 metres tall, which meant that most trucks and most people my height could easily fit underneath. But in 1934, due to a problem with flooding along Montague Street, they decided to raise the ground underneath by 2 feet or roughly 60 centimetres. Now this created three new problems, the first one being that I could no longer walk underneath without ducking. Melbourne's urban kayakers had to find somewhere else to go, but most importantly, a lot of taller vehicles could no longer fit underneath. So in today's video, I'll be showing you everything you need to know about the Montague Street Bridge, and together, we'll laugh at all the idiots who get stuck under the bridge, even though there's 26 different signs on the way to the bridge telling them that it's only 3 metres tall. So let's stop the waffle and get into it. You may be wondering how many times over the last 119 years that the Montague Street Bridge has been hit. And while unfortunately there's no official number, it's your lucky day because I got a 28 study score in further maths. According to this news report from 2016, the Montague Street Bridge had been hit 102 times in the last 6 years. So if we get the number 119 and divide it by 6, we get the number 19.8333. And if we times that by 102, we're left with 2023. What a coincidence. But let's give the Montague Street Bridge the benefit of the doubt and halve that number. That's still over a thousand. That means that over the last 119 years, Years, it is entirely possible that the Montague Street Bridge has been hit well over a thousand times. You may be thinking, there's no way it's been hit that many times. And not so long ago, I was thinking the same, until I found this website called How Many Days Since the Montague Street Bridge Has Been Hit? Com. Now a quick scroll through this website will show you that last year the Montague Street Bridge was hit three times within 24 days and then just two weeks after it was hit again. So if you still don't believe me, go check it out yourself because it also shows you that the average time between hits is only a month and a half. Next up we'll be looking at how after a hundred years people still manage to hit this bridge on an almost monthly basis. According to the most trustworthy source on the entire internet, the YouTube comment section, Whenever you go for your heavy vehicle license in the state of Victoria, which is the home of the Montague Street Bridge, part of the test requires you to be able to navigate around the concrete truck decapitator. So that means that anyone with their heavy vehicle license who's had it for less than 119 years should know to avoid the Montague Street Bridge at all costs. But hey, we're only human and mistakes do happen. For example, 
What if Google Maps doesn't know what type of vehicle you're driving? In the same way that they send Uber Eats drivers on push bikes over the Westgate Bridge, it is possible that Google Maps may send your B-double towing a life-size replica of the Burj Khalifa under the Montague Street Bridge. So it'd make sense to put some sort of warning in front of the bridge, right? Well, luckily, the government's thought of that. There is apparently 26 different signs leading to the Montague Street Bridge telling you that it's only three meters tall. But you have to assume that every truck driver towing a life-size replica of the Eiffel Tower is on their phone just like every other Melbourne driver. How on earth are they supposed to see these signs? Well, luckily, the government thought of that too, installing this thing that smacks any truck that's over three metres tall. As shown here, any vehicle over three metres tall will hit this gantry and be rewarded with a loud thud, after which you have the option to escape on the left side street and you avoid giving your truck the Gideon hairline. But once again, we have to give these drivers drivers the benefit of the doubt. For all we know, these guys could be distracted by something very important, such as watching the latest Yorak Hunt video. So it's entirely possible that this loud thud was drowned out by the sound of E-Double's Hampton Parks. But not all hope is lost because there's still one countermeasure that's going to stop these trucks from hitting the bridge, and that is the thousands of battle scars left behind by trucks that have hit the bridge before. But unfortunately for all of Melbourne's truck drivers, and fortunately for all of us sitting at home watching and laughing, despite all efforts to warn truck drivers that they're going to hit the bridge, budget direct box trucks seem to be addicted to the Montague Street Bridge like a moth to a flame. You may be thinking, how on earth are we going to fix this problem? Well, it's your lucky day because there's still two solutions that we're yet to try. The first option would be to dig out the ground underneath. Now, you may recall that earlier I mentioned the flooding problem that caused them to raise the ground underneath in the first place. But you see, that isn't actually such a bad thing. Just have a look at York Street Bridge just around the corner. The dip under the York Street Bridge provides Melburnians with many useful things. So if they did the same thing with the Montague Street Bridge, Melburnians would have somewhere to take their jet ski, a new water source to drive your car into for insurance fraud reasons, and a hectic new jump where you can launch your AU Falcon at 90 k's an hour. But hey, Dan Andrews, don't get too excited just yet. Put the shovel down and listen to my second option. The second option would be to raise the bridge or remove it altogether. But you see, we can't just do that because one of Melbourne's greatest icons, the 109 tram, which even has its own theme song. One man is sniffing on paint thinner. Another man smells like glue. I spend my evenings on the 109 tram. And that's when I met you runs across the Montague Street Bridge. So before I tell you this option, you're gonna have to hold onto something tight, do up your seatbelt, because you're gonna be blown away by my genius. My ultimate solution to stopping trucks from hitting the Montague Street Bridge is turning the 109 light rail into a loop-de-loop. -loop. You see, if we turn the 109 tram route into a loop-de-loop, -loop, we can raise the Montague Street Bridge to go through the middle and thread the needle. This will be great for tourism, and according to my calculations, it'll bring the average daily ridership of the 109 tram line from three people up to a million. So Dan Andrews, if you're watching, $10 million and I'll let you do it. Anyway, it's time to wrap up this video because I've got to get back to saving the world. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, comment and share if you'd like to hear more teachings from the prophet of your act hunt and if you enjoyed this video so much that you stuck around right till the end comment montague to let me know and as always a shout out to everyone who made a donation to the charity of my bank account i've already spent it all on single ply public bathroom toilet paper and before i go make sure to check out the website and buy a t-shirt if you want to be as good looking as this guy outside of box hill central a man was sipping on cask wine Heading down to ball in McDonald's I was on the 109 Me and some guys from school Heading down to North Richmond We had to go through Victoria Street Where everyone's on heroin